What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Nick Noodles, coming at you with another great video. It's been about a week, I think, since my last update, and I've just been a little bit busy um, getting used to school starting again and also visiting my cousin in West Virginia to go on a small snowboarding trip. That was a lot of fun. I'm hoping to push out some content this weekend or at least prepare some for the upcoming week. It's also just been super dry in terms of like very hype releases. I'm not really going for a lot of bricks right now. Um, Supreme's in the off season, but stay tuned because I am going to be having some news about auto checkout services I'm going to be doing in the future. Definitely follow my Instagram, Nick Noodles YT. Hopefully February has some banger releases. We should see Supreme starting back up again as well. In this video though, we're kind of continuing my series with um, botting as a beginner, everything you need to bot in 2021. And we've covered proxies in the bot. So in this video, I wanna explain, you know, what is a CAPTCHA, the different types of CAPTCHAs, how they relate to Gmails, and you know, how you can get good Gmail accounts if you don't have them. A CAPTCHA is pretty much just a form of bot protection that a lot of websites use. Pretty much every website uses this. And it's pretty much just like a puzzle that you have to solve. We've all done it. They've gotten, you know, a little bit easier over the years, but they can still be kind of difficult to solve. When you're botting, usually, you know, the bot will take care of everything except for the CAPTCHA. At this point in time, it's pretty difficult to bypass, you know, the step of actually solving the CAPTCHA. There are services out there that can do it for you. Those can be kind of complicated to set up and I don't have an experience with them. So we're not gonna be talking about those services, but if you wanna look into them, I know some of them here. So why do you need good Gmails? Um, pretty much the better your Gmails are, the easier it is gonna be to solve CAPTCHAs. And you know, if you have really good Gmails on some websites, you might not even have to solve CAPTCHAs at all. If you can save two to three seconds when solving a CAPTCHA because it's a lot easier, that is gonna dramatically increase your chances of copying at the end of the day. If you don't have to solve CAPTCHAs at all, then again, that dramatically increases your chances as well. So let's talk about the four different types of CAPTCHAs that you can expect to see on these websites. Um, the first one is V2 Invisible, and this is essentially what Supreme uses and if you have a good Gmail account, then you're not going to have to solve any CAPTCHA at all. You don't even have to click a box or anything. It does it all in the background. However, if you don't have a good Gmail account, then a CAPTCHA will pop up for you to solve. So that is the V2 Invisible CAPTCHA. Now, there's another one called the V2 Checkbox. This is kind of similar to the Invisible CAPTCHA. But the only difference is regardless of whether or not you have a good Gmail account, you still have to click the checkbox. Now, if you have the one-click Gmail account, then you won't have to solve any type of CAPTCHA. It'll just, you know, give you the animation of the green check mark, and then you can proceed to check out. However, if you don't have that one-click, then it is going to give you a CAPTCHA to solve. And depending on how good your Gmail is, it might be a two to three second solve. But if it has super slow fading images, it might be a 20 to 30 second solve. So again, those seconds matter when you're trying to check out on a super hype release. Types of websites that use this type of proxy, um, PlayStation Direct's Q system was using this when you initially signed into the Q. Shopify sites usually use some type of V2 checkbox. However, on Shopify, um, regardless if you have a one click or not, you still have to solve a CAPTCHA, uh, but the process of clicking the box and then solving the CAPTCHA is still the same. And then I think recently foot sites have been implementing this type of CAPTCHA if your proxy is flagged um, when you're checking out or if you refresh the page too many times in like a certain amount of time, they will give you a CAPTCHA to solve. And again, if you have one clicks, then you won't have to do anything at all. The third type of CAPTCHA is the V3 reCAPTCHA. This is primarily used by Yeezy Supply and I think Adidas. And this type of CAPTCHA doesn't actually involve like clicking on a puzzle or solving anything or even clicking on a checkbox. This kind of just runs in the background. It's very similar to the V2 Invisible. Essentially, it just takes your Gmail account and it gives it a score anywhere from 0 to 0 0.9. Um, 0 0.9 is the highest that your V3 score can be, and that's what you want it to be at. You should try to aim it between 0.7 and 0.9, uh, but the higher it is, the better. If it isn't in this range, like let's say you have a 0.5, um, Gmail score for the v3 reCAPTCHA, then the website might just end up banning you and you don't want that to happen. 
Lastly, we have the hard captcha, and this doesn't really relate to botting because not a lot of bots have implemented, you know, support for this type of captcha. But since we're talking about all types of captchas, I might as well cover it because um, it is important if you are going manually on certain Shopify websites. That's where this is the most common, and this is the type of captcha where it'll ask you some type of question, whether it's like what is the color orange or like what state is Chicago in stuff like that. And then after that question, you would have to go and solve one or two puzzles. And usually those puzzles are pretty hard or like the images they use are like God awful. And it's just really hard to tell what you're looking at. I'm not sure how Gmails affect this again, but I just wanted to include it because it is a type of captcha. How many good Gmail accounts do you need? This is a hard question to answer and it's really just going to come down to trial and error like all things in botting. Obviously, the more that you have, the better. So what I would do is, you know, start with two accounts. You should have one or two because you can just use whatever accounts you use for watching YouTube videos or um, for your like actual personal Gmail. Test those out. They should be one click and you can use those for botting. Um, you need at least one one click account, but the more tasks that you run on certain websites, and especially if you're using multiple bots, you want to run as many one click accounts as you can. I would just start off with two or maybe five depending on how many you can get if you're getting slammed with captures every single week like they're super slow and fading and it doesn't have anything to do with the bot then chances are you need better gmails so in order to get good gmails you need an account and then you also need some type of farming tool so for accounts uh, I highly recommend using an older account I've been you know trying to farm newer accounts that I made at the end of 2020 last year and pretty much none of them have gotten one click status yet. The only accounts that I have that are one click are either ones that I made in like 2016 or 2017 or um, ones that I bought recently from Gmail plug. Those were created anytime between 2006, 2018. I don't really know. Um, but these older accounts have gotten one clicks way faster. So I highly recommend, you know, looking into getting older accounts. If you want to make newer accounts, Gmails require a phone number. Um, and there is a limit on the number of accounts you can make with one phone number. I've done some research and some people are saying you should only do um, two accounts per phone number. I'm not sure how valid that is. Maybe that's why my newer accounts aren't getting one clicks. There are services out there that essentially let you use like a burner phone to verify your Gmail accounts. Um, and then, you know, after you put that phone number, you can just delete it from the account and then use like the Google Authenticator app um, as your way of verifying. Once you have accounts that are ready to be farmed um, or just maintained, you're going to need some type of farming tool. Now, the two tools that I know are the most popular and that I personally use are AYCD and Kodai Essentials. And these range anywhere from $23 to $30 a month, depending on, you know, if you're in a cook group that can get you a discount. I pay $23 a month for AYCD. Um, Kodai Essentials has the nicer UI. It's a lot easier to use. It looks a lot prettier. In my personal experience, when I was running it on a Intel i7-6700K, it was very CPU intensive. So I couldn't really do a lot of stuff in the background. Like I couldn't play video games. Um, and even like, you know, video editing was kind of slow when I had that farming in the background. Now, another thing to note is that these toolboxes also have features like um, an IP spoofer, a resale manager, profile managers, uh, but you're likely just going to use the farming tool most of the time. And what these farming tools do is essentially just simulate activity on your Gmail accounts. And then they are also programmed to take breaks every now and then. Um, you don't want to, you know, just spam activity on it 24-7 because Google will just flag it. I would just leave the settings default for whatever tool you're using and just let it run in the background. I don't want to go into too much detail on this video on how to set it up because if you buy one of these services, you're going to be put in a Discord group and they're going to have all the guides and support that you would need to get started. Um, so I don't want to waste any time there. Now, my personal recommendations, again, I highly recommend using older accounts for whatever reason. They just get one clicks a lot faster. I highly recommend turning on two-factor authentication. Um, you can set it up so that it doesn't go to your phone number. It just goes to your Google Authenticator app. And so that allows you to not have to worry about using um, your phone number across multiple accounts if you don't want to. I also highly recommend using proxies to farm your Gmail accounts. I don't think you can farm more than one or two on your local host. Otherwise, those accounts are going to get flagged. Um, and on drop day, when you're using these Gmail accounts in your CAPTCHA solvers, you don't want to have like five Gmails on one local host because then you're going to get really bad CAPTCHAs. 
Capture proxies are generally really cheap. I use cookie proxies and I think it's like $12 a month for 10 proxies so I can farm up to 10 accounts off those proxies. And what these are, are pretty much just data center proxies that um, aren't used for botting at all. They're literally just used for farming Gmail activity. I highly recommend going with a provider that will let you renew at the end of the month and keep your old proxies. You don't want to be switching out your capture proxy every month because that can also hurt your score. With older accounts, you should be able to get, you know, one clicks after about a week of farming. I don't really know how long it takes with near ones, but based on research, I believe that it can take a few months. Anyways, that pretty much wraps up this video. Gmails and CAPTCHA can be super complicated um, and, you know, it can be super confusing when you go for a drop and you're just getting slammed by all these CAPTCHAs. So if you have any questions, definitely leave them down below or message me on Instagram. Uh, I hope to see you all on the next video.